So headgear. Hussars wore a lot of different headgear over the years. The three main items of headgear associated with Hussars were originally um, things called Meltrons or Melotrons, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, which were tall conical felt hats with two flags that would wrap around them and maybe um, some things written on the front of it and just these two flags that would be worn wrapped around or unwrapped and hanging loose. That looks stupid in my opinion, but that's what Hussars started out with. Exotic, crappy headgear that no one else had. Then, a lot of Hussars moved on to wearing shakos, which were the pretty standard item of headgear that all the other units wore. Just the normal shako. Feathers on the top, maybe. Um, emblem. Chin scales. Maybe some decorative cord. Tassels hanging off the side. All sorts of things. Troops would love to decorate them. And that became a formal thing. They would have to have these decorations on them. And the other style were the Hungarian style fur hats. Uh, this would be this had been worn by the earliest Tassars, but had sort of faded in popularity to the Meltrons for some reason. And later on, it, it gained in popularity again, and they started wearing um, Busbies. Uh, for the French, they called them Colpacks, which is funny because um, for the English, they called the little bag the Colpack. The French Busbies were very, very tall. And that's what this one is influenced by. I wanted it to, to sort of have more of the French look. The British Busbies were tall but narrow. And I really hate the look of them because they're just too narrow. The Prussian Busbies, or German Busbies as they became, were quite low, like a drum, and fat. And they called them Pelzmutz, which is basically fur hat. That's what it means. They also, everyone of them had a bag. I don't know why they had a bag, that's possibly influenced by the uh, the older Hungarian dress and what that was originally, who knows, maybe they put things in it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, for this uniform, I started out with this white one here. This is made of sheep skin, and there's a little cotton cough there, the skull with a nice black velvet bag. The chin scales here are from a Grenadier Guards bear skin, which were those great big tall fur hats. Now these were originally made of bear skin, and that's a very hard thing to get in Australia. And I didn't really want to get bear skin anyway. I don't think you can get it in Australia. It's probably a prohibited item. I didn't want it myself, and I didn't need it, because I was going to have a nice white busby to contrast with my black uniform, because this uniform was meant to have white fur on it, but the people who made the jackets messed up and didn't have white fur on them. Actually, didn't have much fur at all, it was only the collar and the cuffs I had to put the rest on myself. Anyway, that made the white busby redundant. Now, most Hussars wore black busbies originally, although the British, they wanted to be different. They had sort of brown ones and the Germans started wearing brown sort of natural colour ones as well, but originally they were black. The ones who wore white busbies were the trumpeters. These, um, you'd call them musicians, but they weren't musicians who played uh, fancy tunes. They were just signal people who they had to have in order to uh, direct the unit. So this was this isn't a historical, this is a perfectly historical thing. So I had to get a black busby to fit in with this style. Now um, the analogue of bear fur that is a lot easier to get is uh, I think it's Himalayan goat or Mongolian goat, which is a nice black thick fur. And I just couldn't be bothered with that in the end. It was too expensive, I could have afforded it, but I didn't really want to mess around with trying to get the pelt just right and then not having it right and having to get more. So what I did was, 
I got a Scottish Piper's bonnet, which uh, is called a feather bonnet, that had been damaged, an antique one that had been sort of destroyed beyond use. I unwrapped the feathers and I made a, a nice stainless steel wire frame and I attached them to this. Now I was inspired by one of the characters in the film clip for One Week by Bare Naked Ladies. You see in the start of that they have a, a scene influenced by Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when everyone's sort of dressed up in the costumes of uh, 19th century um, courtiers. One particular guy is wearing sort of a, a general's frock coat with all this decoration and embroidery and his hat is similar to this and it sort of has a floaty look and I worked out that it was actually uh, made of uh, ostrich feathers and so I really wanted to emulate that with the look of my Busby when I made it. I think it has a, a more of an operatic look, a bit floatier and fancier. I don't know if it's lighter than it would be if it was made out of bare fur. I imagine it is, so it's probably more comfortable. It was a good decision. And air goes through it a lot easier too, because that is not, uh, there's no, it's no skin backing behind this as it would be with um, bare fur, <laughs> or, or fur of any description. So I think I made a good choice. Uh, these uh, chin scales here are Piccolo chin scales that you'd have on those uh, little tiny leather helmets that the Germans and uh, various people love so much. And, but that's not dissimilar to what you'd have on a Busby anyway. The skull here is also, well, that's something you'd have on Prussian Busbies. And the little pom-pom here is made out of uh, bits of wool fur that I've wrapped up quite tightly. I've had other decorations, cords and things on it, but this simpler look works best, I find. So I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out. Oh yeah, and a white flannel Busby because it, a uh, bag, cold pack, because I think that has the right look. Originally, I would always have red bags on their Busbys. Well, not always. Sometimes you'd have a different color, but mostly it was red. But I thought, bugger it, it goes better with the, this whole uniform and the theme. So I chose white instead. And that's the story of the headgear.